What's up, Dave Altizer here, and today we're gonna to talk about what I think is the greatest vlogging camera ever invented, the Canon M6. So I've been shooting vlogs now for a couple of months, but I've been using the Canon G7X Mark II for the last couple of months as my vlogging camera. So this happened today. This is my vlog rig. Look at that. Isn't that great? Dude, this is Dave, it's Jim, and we are <laughs> in over our heads. <laughs> it's been good, but the audio quality on it is just atrocious. Um, also, the fact that I can't change out the lens kind of sucks. The Canon M5 was released uh, not too long ago, and that looked pretty cool, but I had this issue with I had an issue with it with the monitor that basically would flip down. You couldn't put the M5 on a tripod or a grill pod. I was frustrated. I was thinking of buying an M5 and putting a mount on the hot shoe and flipping the camera upside down and thought that would maybe solve the problem. But as soon as I thought of that, Canon announced this, the M6. Now the M6 is essentially the exact same as the Canon M5, with the exception of the screen orientation. Instead of flipping down like the M5, the M6 flips up, which solves all the problems that all the YouTubers and vloggers had. Look at this thing, it's got a great build to it. It's honestly not much bigger than my G7X. I love the kind of silver and black finish. It reminds me of my old Leica M3 that my great uncle gave to me. This is kind of like a family heirloom. Um, so let's go over some of the things that I like about this camera, some of the things I don't like about this camera, and I'll show you my vlogging setup with this camera. Also, I'd like to give a shout out to my friend John Melton at Nashville Early Broncos. He bought this and he's letting me use this for this video. So thanks John Melton. So obviously one of the best things about this camera for YouTube and for vlogging is the fact that I can view what I'm shooting with this flip up screen. Another thing that is extremely important when you're doing vlogs, when you're doing YouTube content, is being able to trust that the camera can autofocus correctly. That is probably one of the most important things because you're not gonna have somebody operating the camera to pull focus for you. This camera is much better than the one I'm shooting on right now is at autofocus. I'm shooting on the Canon 1DC because it's Canon, one of Canon's only 4K cameras, but it's full, I'm using fully manual lens on this camera. And it's great for just sitting here and not moving, but as soon as I start vlogging, obviously that thing weighs 100 pounds and you can't trust the autofocus. So this camera's got amazing autofocus. It's got Canon's amazing dual pixel autofocus, which is one of the best in the world. In fact, it's better than Sony's autofocus system that they have on the A6300 and A6500s. It's one of the reasons why a lot of YouTubers choose Canon over a lot of other manufacturers. Does this replace an ADD? I think so. I never owned an ADD. I've never used an ADD. Um, this has the same sensor in it. However, I am seeing a lot of noise in the image. I'm seeing it a lot online. I'm seeing a lot of noise in the image when I look back um, on this footage in my computer as well. And I don't know what it is. It might be the processor. It might be the way that it compresses the image. It might be the fact that you only get IPB codec instead of all I codec. But it's just kind of a noisy image I found. Uh, this lens isn't very good. This is the kit 15 to 45, 3.5 to 6.3. It's got IS, which is great, but um, the quality of this lens is not perfect by any means. I'm filming on this camera right now, so you can kind of see what it looks like. I'm all the way zoomed out at 15 millimeters, um, just spinning around. You can see if I touch my computer in the back, it focuses to that. If I touch my face, it'll focus back to me. So that is one of the best things about this camera is how reliable the Canon's autofocus is, especially on this camera because of the dual pixel. So another reason why this camera is great for vlogging for YouTube is because it has a mic input. The RX100 cameras, the G7X cameras, um, don't have mic inputs, which blows my mind. They would sell even more of them if they did. But this camera is not much bigger than a G7X 
and uh, it does have a little bit more weight to it. You can kind of feel it when you hold it and it's got a nice grip here, but it has a mic input. And so because of that, this is a great vlogging setup. So let me show you what I have done with this camera as a vlogger, as a vlog camera. If you wanna use this camera as a vlogging camera, here are the things that you're gonna need. You're gonna need the camera. You're gonna wanna buy the 11 to 22 millimeter lens, probably, because 15 millimeters is sorta of wide, it's just not wide enough. Um, so you're gonna wanna buy that lens. My friend John doesn't have that lens yet, um, but I would recommend getting the 11 to 22 millimeter lens. With this camera, buy a straight flash bracket. I'll put a link in the description. And of course your handy dandy Gorillapod or whatever other um, tripod that you use. And last but not least, a microphone. I have the Rode Video Microphone, uh, the Rode Video Mic Pro. It's fantastic, it's got good range, it's got good sound. Um, Casey Neistat uses the one from Shure called the Lens Hopper. Um, I have found just through research that the one that he uses does have a little bit more of a tenor sound. It's, it's all just subjective. This one has a little bit more bass. Um, the one that he uses sounds a little bit more natural. This one sounds a little bit more full. So um, I like the way this sounds, it, it works for me. So camera, mic, straight flash bracket, tripod. I prefer the grill pod, it's great. So check this out. So this is how you do it. Take your camera, screw it on like so. Ta-da. Put your, uh, make sure you put your little plate on there and check this out. Boom. Take your microphone right there, plug it in and voila. As you can see, this solves the problem that you have when you use this camera because you can't put your microphone on the hot shoe. You can't stick it on top um, because it would get in the way of the, of the screen, which you really need in order to make sure that your angles are correct and that you can select your focus. And you can actually change all your settings and do everything you want with the touch screen on this. So it's a fantastic setup for YouTubers and vloggers. So this little tray right here, this little flash bracket with the microphone and the camera really is just a fantastic setup. Um, obviously you just stick it into your tripod like so and boom you've got a setup that is much lighter than a DSLR like a 80D or 70D um, it's not much bigger than what an A6300 or 6500 would be the only downside is that you're shooting on a camera that does not shoot 4k I don't understand I don't get it I don't understand why Canon won't put 4K on cameras like this, it would make everyone that has switched to Sony go back to Canon because Canon's color science is so good. Um, it's really frustrating that Canon won't do it. Uh, I don't understand, but this is my setup right here. So I'll go over some of my settings right now. All right, so I'm gonna go over some of the settings here that I have for my uh, M6, I've set the camera back to a factory setting so that I can start fresh and show you exactly what I do. So let's turn the baby on here and you can see I've got, um, I'm gonna go ahead and record so that you can see what I'm filming. So I've got um, the Donatello action figure here and then I've got my Leica M3 in the background. Um, and let me just show you how good the touch autofocus is. All you gotta do is just touch the object that you want in focus and all of a sudden it magically comes into focus. There's no hunting, there's no back and forth. It really is unbelievable. And this is some of the best technology that Canon has to offer. The dual pixel autofocus that Canon has is fantastic. They've used it on their cinema cameras, they've used it on the 5D Mark IV, on the 1D X Mark II. They're bringing it onto their mirrorless line now, and hopefully every single camera that Canon makes from here on out will have it, because it is unbelievable. In fact, if I lock focus on Donatello and move him around, you'll actually see that the focus tracks with him. And this is the same is true when you're filming a person. Um, 
and you touch them and they walk towards the camera. It really is remarkable how good the autofocus really is. It, al it also has face tracking as well, which is fantastic. Um, and it's really just an amazing system. Now that I've shown off some of the autofocus features, I'm gonna go into the settings and show you exactly how I set my camera up um, so that you can have the most effective and most beautiful pictures possible with the M6 uh, when you're shooting YouTube and vlogs. You wanna make sure that your dial is set to the camera icon on the top here. So first I'm gonna go into the autofocus settings. Um, you wanna have basically the picture of the face means that it has face tracking plus tracking. So that's the one that you wanna have. So select that, it's on there by default. So next I would go into the IS settings. It's on the fourth tab on the camera icon. Go into the IS settings, go to digital and disable it. I do not like the digital stabilization. It creates like a weird wobble effect. It's a really big pet peeve of mine. I think it looks atrocious. So all the lenses that you'll probably be using for vlogs have IS already on them, like the 11 to 22 and even this lens, the 15 to 45. Um, they have IS built into the lens and that should be good enough. This camera doesn't have um, five axis image stabilization like the Sony's, like the Panasonic and Olympus cameras. Unfortunately, um, Canon calls it five axis, but it's all digital and it just looks terrible. So disable it. Um, make sure that your highlight tone priority is turned off. That comes all the way back from the old 5D days, 5D Mark II. Um, turn this off, auto lighting optimizer. Sometimes it works well, but I've just found that it's really buggy and like when you're filming, it adjusts your exposure automatically and your so your face kind of like starts to glow and change. I leave white balance on auto, believe it or not, most of the time. Every once in a while when auto isn't doing it for me, I go to Calvin, which is the K icon, and I adjust from there. If you're not aware of what Calvin is and what it stands for, it's actually the color of iron as it heats up and cools down. So keep that in mind, the lower the number, the more blue it is, the higher the number, the more red it is. Um, we'll go back in here, it's picture style. We're gonna go into that. So I love the picture style called Faithful. And it's what I use, I'm actually using it right now on this camera, on the 1DC, shooting 4K. And the reason I love it is because it almost has a gray built into the profile. And so you don't even have to do any color grading or anything like that. The profile itself kind of has a little bit of a grade to it, as you can see in the image that you're looking at right now. There's, you're looking at it straight out of the camera. It's got a nice contrasty look and it kind of does a nice kind of grade to it. So I really love it. I make sure that my sharpness settings are turned all the way down. I don't like the camera to adjust those things. Um, so I turn those down as far as I can. I take my contrast down two notches, and my saturation down one notch. It gives me a little bit of room if I need to adjust. Also, I think that the profile just by itself is a little bit too punchy. So I really like the Faithful picture profile. It's one of my favorites, it's kind of a secret. Um, and I've been shooting on Faithful on Canon DSLRs ever since the Canon 7D when I was shooting weddings back in 2009. So um, Faithful is a great profile. Um, tried and true, the Faithful profile. Uh, go to your movie record size and change it to 23 if you want. I think it looks more cinematic. Um, it just feels better. Obviously you don't want these videos to necessarily feel cinematic, but there's just something about 2398, it just looks better. So I'm gonna turn my mic on, I haven't had it on yet. So I'll turn it on and we'll go into our sound recording. If you have the Rode video mic set to the zero dB option, you can leave the sound recording on auto. Obviously when you're filming yourself, it's hard to adjust those things. And so just leave it on auto, but if you wanna have the best audio possible, click over to the plus 20 dB, go into audio, go to manual, and turn your record level way down. And what that does is that actually makes the preamp sound better because what's happening is the microphone is coming in hot and the camera is pulling all the boost levels down and so the noise that you normally get with these cameras is kind of loud. You have a little bit of a hissing sound. And so by doing this, you're actually lowering that sound, that noise floor, um, 
because the preamp in the camera is so bad. For YouTube stuff, for vlog stuff, I just leave it on zero and have the sound on auto. One more thing, I like to turn off the, the sound. Um, I think that it's a little bit loud and obnoxious, so on the third tab in the wrench icon, turn the beep off, I think it's annoying. One thing that I love about the Canon UI on the back of the screen is some of these really simple icons here. You've got the camera, the Q, and this little star. Um, the camera icon allows you to change between auto exposure, which is really, really great setting to have when you're shooting vlogs, and then uh, manual mode, which I use when I'm doing a professional shoot. I did a shoot yesterday for, um, for something here at work with this camera, and I went into manual mode. I got everything exactly how I wanted it, but then, and then obviously you have time-lapse movie, which is fantastic. You just set it up, push record, um, and it does a time-lapse automatically. You can adjust your settings and stuff in the menu, I think. Yeah, so this is how you can adjust your settings on the time lapse on the seconds and everything. Um, really great feature to have that built in so you don't have to build them in post. But let's just leave it on movie auto mode because that's probably what you're gonna be using when you do um, vlogs and stuff. So this star icon is a very special and important thing to utilize. You can use it on the screen, but the M6 also has it built into the top right of the camera. And what's really cool about it is you can get your shot set up. So say you're filming yourself for a vlog um, and see how this image looks a little bit uh, overexposed. It's a little bright, so I'm gonna take it down. All you gotta do is take the exposure compensation dial and dial it down and you can actually see the image adjusting itself to be a little bit lower. It's fantastic, it's great, it's really easy to use. Um, and once it's set, I like to push the star icon and it locks the image. And so no matter where I go or what I do, it's completely locked. The exposure is not going to change. The white balance isn't going to change. The ISO isn't going to change. And that's a really handy thing to have when you're filming yourself and say the sun is kind of going in and out, the clouds are going over the sun, um, your lighting is changing, or maybe you're moving the camera back and forth. Having the image change while you're talking to the camera can be really distracting. So using that little star icon locks it. You push it again and it unlocks it. But again, it's just this great camera. It's got the autofocus, the touch autofocus, the touch screen. It's so good, very fast. The uh, face tracking, I doubt that it's gonna track the uh, Ninja Turtle. I'm sure that they haven't um, put that, put Ninja Turtles in, in their UI to be trackable. Oh, there it is. <laughs> so um, that's the settings that I would recommend if you're using this camera for vlogs and for YouTube. Pretty awesome. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little review video, this tips and tricks video. Camera setups like this that are easy to use, that are lightweight, um, allow you to bring this setup everywhere you go. And I've found that that is the way that you can get the best content is when you have your camera with you at all times, you always are ready to shoot stuff. You're always ready to execute the ideas that come into your mind. And so that's just my two cents. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think. Subscribe, hit that bell so you get notifications whenever I post new videos. I will be doing more tech reviews and more vlogs and different things like that. So please subscribe, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, peace out.